Welcome to Policy Bazaar. I'm Arjun Bhagat and today we are going to take the conversation forward on tax planning. As you're aware, uh, it's only a few weeks for the end of the financial year. During our previous discussion, we talked about the importance of tax planning and how we can save taxes by choosing the right investment plans. We also learned about various tools of investment that we could choose from depending on our needs and long-term investment goals. Now, this includes the likes of insurance, ULIPs, PPFs, etc. Now, in this episode, we are going to focus on how you can avoid opting for the wrong insurance plans during uh, our tax planning, if you plan carefully, that is. Now, joining us in the studio is uh, Naveen Kukreja, Group uh, Chief Marketing Officer of Policy Bazaar and Director of PESA Bazaar. Uh, welcome to the show, um, Naveen. We are talking Thanks, about Ajay. insurance. We want to focus on that in this episode. Why is it so important? And uh, why should one have that as a major component of our uh, financial plans? Thanks, Arjun. Uh, so we all try and plan for life for a long term, uh, but we all know that life is uncertain. Uh, and insurance essentially is a product which tries to cover uncertain situations and tries to cover financially uh, for the uncertain situations which you can't plan as an individual. That's why in my mind insurance is one of the most important investment products that you have uh, which you must have in your portfolio. Uh, there are various kinds of insurance which we will talk about. Uh, of course starting from the term insurance which covers your life, something that covers your health, something covers that covers your uh, future planning from a retirement and child perspective. But essentially insurance is, is a product uh, is usually uh, misunderstood by Indian consumers because of lack of awareness but it's also one of the most important products just because of the fact that it can protect in scenarios which you normally cannot or a normal individual cannot plan for. Right so you know talking about insurance products one plan which I feel personally is very important is term plan. Now that's pure life insurance. It's not a tax saving instrument, uh, but it is important. But it really hasn't gained that much of popularity in India. Um, explain to us what term insurance is and why it is important. And also, you know, some of the broad costs attached with it. Yeah. Arjun, absolutely. Like you said, it's one of the two most important insurance plans that I uh, recommend to the consumers and users. Uh, and if there's the first plan that you should take, that you should take a term plan. Essentially, uh, I, I look at my scenario. Uh, you know, I have a uh, I have a wife and a three-year-old kid. I, you know, we have a certain expenditure as a family. I have certain plans for my kid, uh, for his future and his education, uh, which is all good. I know I'm earning for that and I'm saving for that. What happens if I'm not there two years later? Life is uncertain. Something can happen to you. Uh, uh, something can happen to me. And that's where term insurance comes into picture. So if, for example, God forbid, if I was not there two years later, I would not want my family to suffer or change their lifestyle. I would not like to see my child's education or future planning got, get hampered just because I'm not there. So buying a term plan tries to protect that risk, essentially. Uh, a typical rule of thumb that I have for the amount of cover you should take is roughly 15 times your current salary. Uh, let's say you well, know, it's an annual, uh, on uh, an annualized, annual, basis. annualized basis. Let's say your annual salary is six lakhs, which means about fifty thousand per month. Uh, my suggestion is that you should take a cover of typically one crore. Essentially, again, the reason for that is that if you take one crore, and if something were to happen to you, God forbid, uh, you know your family gets that one crore completely tax-free. And if they were to deposit that in bank, the interest for that would be roughly equal to 6 lakhs, which is your income. So essentially the family can continue their standard of living by the interest income from that sum assured. So that's a ballpark rule of thumb. So uh, you talked about one, one crore. Uh, what would the typical um, premium be for one crore? And, and how does it work? I mean, uh, the, the younger you get it, uh, the more you stand to gain. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, uh, the earlier you take it, the better it is. But typically consumers do take it when they kind of have the need, when they get married and that's when they start to see the dependency for their family. Uh, so for a typical 30 year old, a one crore cover would cost as little as 8000 rupees per annum. Uh, that, that cost has come down drastically in the last three to five years uh, with the advent of online insurance plans where the insurers have cut down on the, on the distribution and operation cost and then passed on the benefit to the consumers. So term plans actually work very well for consumers today. You know, you take a one crore cover for as low as 8,000 bucks if you are 30, 30 years old. If you're 35, it will be about 10, 11,000. And that's a fixed amount that you end up paying for the term that you have taken that 
for. So if you take it till 60 or 70, yes. it's not going to increase like, you know, health, health insurance increases. Yeah. People are always worried about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. The term insurance is a long term cover and you fix your premium why, when you're taking it. Uh, so if you take a term insurance cover at 30, you will still pay the same premium 20 years later for the same uh, sum assured. So the earlier you can take it, the better it is. Uh, and if you if you have dependents, the other way to think about it is, if you have dependents who would be at a disadvantage or whose lifestyle is at a risk of changing if something were to happen to you, term cover is a must in, in your portfolio. Let's move towards medical insurance. Um, you would obviously consider that a major component in the entire insurance portfolio that one has as a family, as an individual. Um, you know, walk us through that. What are the kind of uh, plans that one can opt for and uh, why is it important? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, like I said, Arjun, uh, there were two plans that one must have from an insurance perspective. One was a term insurance, the other is the health or a critical illness insurance and if you can combine that, it's, it's the best product. Uh, so, health insurance essentially, again, you know, we, uh, you know, life cover is a once in a lifetime kind of an eventuality. But health insurance is something that you can need over and over again, you can need multiple times and every time uh, something happens to you or your family, if you have to pay from your pocket, it kind of uh, hits your budget, it hits your planning, it can alter your planning in a, in a fashion that, you know, kind of uh, impacts your retirement or your child's education. So it's better to have an insurance plan in the form of a health insurance or a critical illness cover which can protect against that eventuality if you have to go for some expensive health treatment and the health, health treatment is getting very expensive these days you can go for the uh, the best from india from abroad and it, ca it can get very expensive you can cover that through a health insurance plan there are basically three or four kinds of uh, health insurance plans one is a normal uh, health insurance plan which protects you if you fall sick and you are admitted to hospital for any reason uh, these covers usually are cashless and hence very convenient these days uh, you if you have a cashless cover you just get admitted and your uh, you kind of inform your insurer as well as hospital uh, if the hospital is part of network they will directly settle the bill with the insurer you right. don't pay anything uh, so from that perspective it's very convenient for consumers so that's one type of and very most one of the most popular types of health insurance the other is a critical illness cover which protects against uh, certain specific critical illnesses. So now this is often um, offered by the company as a rider. That's right. So explain to us, um, you know, what riders are and um, what are the benefits of, say, taking a critical illness and are they different for men and women? So the critical illness products are, right, uh, are usually available as a rider, but they are also available as standalone products by certain companies, uh, either life or health. Uh, okay, so they are available separately. They are available right. separately also. So one such product is available through Aviva. Uh, I think another such product is available through Bharti AXA. Uh, for, uh, the only difference between a rider and a full product is that you can go for a rider product only with the main product. So you have to have the main health product and then you can take a rider and the rider is always attached to the main product. You need to continue the main product to have the rider also. Whereas if you take it as a separate product, you can continue to uh, uh, you can decide to continue the critical illness cover but change your health insurance later, increase it, reduce it depending on the need uh, the, without touching the uh, critical illness product. So if you have it available as a separate product, you always have more flexibility but even if you have, as, have it as a rider, it's equally good. Uh, it usually covers certain specific types of illnesses so that's something that consumers should read out and get themselves aware with in terms of what diseases does it cover. Uh, but typically the kind of diseases it covers uh, are the ones which are rarer in nature but if they were to happen to somebody they will have a much bigger financial impact rather than you know generally falling ill and hence they are they are important so suppose you know you have a you have a heart attack or you have cancer uh, all of these are treatable now but they are very expensive from a treatment perspective and if one were to pay himself or herself for that that can impact all the future planning and hence, if you have a critical illness uh, rider or a separate cover for a, for a appropriate sum, that can take care of your illness for a, for a elongated period.
So, um, as far as critical illness goes, medical health insurance goes, the, the, you know, the, the, the ones that we are familiar with, um, they are both, of course, tax deductible. Yeah. Uh, how expensive is critical uh, illness cover, uh, both as a rider and, I mean, just a ballpark figure for our viewers to get an idea of uh, how it works. So, uh, because the concern is always, you know, yeah. am I overpaying, uh, yeah. you know, may maybe it is a small, it is actually a small cost to, you know, cover your life, but still. Yeah. So uh, from a cost of protection perspective, they are not very expensive, like you said. So f uh, typically a critical illness cover uh, for about 5 lakhs would be available to you for as low as 3.5 to 4,000, depending on the insurer that you go with. Uh, you, if you want to go for a higher sum assured, which people do want to when they decide to take their critical illness cover, uh, a 10 lakh cover would be available to you for six, seven thousand. Few people tell me that they don't go for a separate health insurance. Is that they have a health insurance cover from their companies. Right. Uh, typically, the question that comes is that they have some health insurance. They don't know how much it is, and they're not sure whether it's adequate or not. So my suggestion to that, uh, and if you're in that category, my suggestion to you as a consumer would be that there is something called a uh, super top up or top up plans available that's an excellent way of topping up your health insurance especially if you have an existing cover from your company uh, at a very very economical cost <coughs> or even if you have a super top up is super the top term up. All right. yeah so it essentially tops up your original health cover so if you already it's ma uh, targeted for people who already have one health cover and they want to kind of have an so additional cover. So it pretty much uh, reinforces the insurance that you have for you and your family. Yeah, uh, increases yeah. the limits and... Uh, increases the limits are a very economical cost. So if you, for example, if you pay 10,000 rupees premium for a 5 lakh cover, you would get, you can top it up to as high as 20 lakhs by paying an additional 5,000 rupees only. Uh, so you know, that's a good tip because yeah. a lot of the insurance companies don't really overtly tell you that, that, you know, you can get this benefit. Uh, I, I, I wonder why, but... Right. Uh, yeah, from a from a company's perspective, if you buy the uh, full health cover, uh, the you know you pay you pay more, and right. hence uh, the companies do. And given given the health insurance penetration, I think the companies are more f focusing more on people to have the first insurance cover. Uh, but there are a lot of people who have the first first health insurance cover, and they still want to enhance just because of the rising cost of medical. Uh, and top up or super top up is an excellent way of topping up your coverage without paying a bomb for that. Right, uh, let's move to child plans. Another critical area, especially for young parents, uh, cost of education is, is going up every year. I'm, I'm quite surprised to learn how uh, yeah. expensive it's become. Even in India, I mean, America and other places is yeah. of course a different story. Uh, how should a young couple uh, or a middle-aged one go about planning for their children? Yeah. And what are the options available? Into and also, you know, try to get that uh, insurance benefit, the sure. the tax benefit that insurance sure. covers sure. have. Sure. Uh, Arjun, like you said, child child education planning is one of the important parts of anybody who has a child. And some somebody who has a child kind of thinks of either child planning or retirement as the two options. We'll talk about retirement later. One of the examples that I quote very often is. Uh, when I did my MBA about 14 years back and the cost of doing the MBA from the same college is now about 15 times in 15 years, which means the cost has doubled roughly, a year. roughly, roughly every, every, every three to four years, the cost doubles, which means the cost is increasing at about 20% a year. Right. That's how the uh, education cost is increasing from good institutes uh, uh, in the last or has increased in the last 15 years. So it's very, very important from a future planning perspective to start planning for your child's education now because, you know, uh, you don't know how the cost, how fast the cost of education will rise. Uh, from, a, from a planning perspective, uh, there, are, there are various options to the individuals uh, so, and there are different approaches that individuals take. Let's continue this uh, discussion, Naveen, because it is important. He's taking you uh, through the ABCs of uh, insurance. Uh, you know, we are talking about um, child plans. Uh, some would say that, you know, uh, what about, uh, you know, instead of buying a child plan, what about term insurance or linking it to mutual funds? Uh, you know, what are the pros and cons of that? Um, yeah. uh, Naveen, can you explain that? Yeah, Arjun, that's a very good question. Per se, it's not a bad strategy of taking a mutual fund or another investment option and a term plan. However, one area where a child plan specifically scores over any other option, including the term and mutual fund, is that if something were to happen to you uh, and you were to let's uh, be, be not there, a term plan also pays out 
but what happens is that it pays out to the nominee let's say which is typically your family your child is still young and what happens to the funds when the child actually needs it uh, later for his education is something that you don't know you depend on your family a child plan protects that risk also what happens if you take a child plan and if something were to happen to you uh, the investment stays in the name of the child and is available only for the child to use when he or she becomes 18 and needs the funds so that's one of the small but very very critical differences and and that's why child plans are that uh, that that good from a child planning perspective that you know some if you are alive and you have planned well then your child anyways gets those funds but if something happens to you the child plan protects that and ensures that the funds go only to the child which was the original intention let's talk about retirement and pension plans i mean that's a concern that you know many people have a concern i guess grows when you hit your 40s yeah yep. um, i don't know if it should be younger but yeah 40s it certainly strikes yep. you like it has uh, for me um, Tell us about pension plans and uh, retirement plans that uh, you know a consumer can take. Arjun, li like you rightly said, it's amazing that people do not think about retirement till they hit a certain age, whether it's. No, I'm just talking them. about myself. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. No, no, it's. <laughs> they it's are very, me. very. Si yeah. They are very sensible people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sheesh is one of them. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Uh, so people start thinking about that and worrying about that when they hit a certain age, and then they, you know, retirement kind of the retirement starts figuring in the thought process. And it's also amazing that in India, very very few people have are covered by government pension plan, which is essentially the the government employees. Everybody who is not there is not covered by any sort of pension plan. In and fact, that has also become contributory now. That, that that's also contributory for for a certain certain period and period. thereafter. Right. Um, and so for the all the others who are not covered by pension at all uh, they my urge is to kind of forget them to start thinking about their retirement goal as early as possible and one of the golden rules uh, in for retirement planning is that the earlier you start the better it is so for example once you just just for an example once you have imagine if once you have a corpus of 12 lakhs your interest income from that starts to be one lakh and above so your corpus itself starts kind of investing back into the retirement plan so the earlier you kind of get to that corpus in your life the better it is because then the corpus itself will start funding uh, your retirement plan uh, from there are various options available like i said in the in like in the child so, plan, so investment one plan. clarification when you say the corpus starts um, fueling or uh, you know making your investment i mean your your pension plan bigger it's because of the interest because of the interest income so for example if i were to start at 25 and invest 1 lakh every year and get about 8 to 9 percent interest on that in eight years uh, my corpus will become about 12 lakhs and at eight percent it will start to earn interest income of 1 lakh so a scenario of somebody investing starting at 25 versus a scenario of somebody starting at 33 which is eight years later substantial uh, at 33 uh, the first person will have two lakhs going into the corpus one lakh from the investment and one lakh from the interest income versus only one lakh for the person who started late so it can become really really substantial when you know when you hit the magical age of 60 and when you really need those right funds. Um, Naveen you know we're going to take uh, consumer qu our viewers questions consumer questions uh, now uh, we've got just a couple of minutes to go but uh, we're going to try and take as many as we can we've got Nilima from Delhi and she wants to know um, how to choose the right insurance agent and uh, she says she's afraid of being misinformed or conned uh, by an agent and you had talked about online uh, yeah, buying yeah. it online as well yeah, yeah. so the pros and cons of both please yeah. Uh, Nilima, uh, it's it's a very uh, it's a very important question, and it's it's something that that's kind of uh, insurance industry is now suffering with, which is the concern of mis-selling, which uh, which is a pretty valid point that you've raised. So my suggestion to you would be that, irrespective of the channel that you go through or, and the agent that you choose, uh, it's your responsibility to know what plan are you buying and know all the details. So instead of worrying about the agent, uh, uh, think about the questions that you want to ask in terms of why are you investing in the plan that you're investing in and uh, what 
questions do you want to ask regarding you know uh, the the investment options the return options the flexibility options what if you were to stop in the middle kind of questions there are currently from a depending on your objective again if you're investing from a savings perspective there are options available online and offline one of the one of the good ways to start would be to kind of go to uh, compare different plans uh, you could go visit policy bazaar or any similar uh, site uh, to kind of look at different options available what they can do for you from a return perspective and what are the salient features and and restrictions that those plans have right um, we we've, we've got alok pal uh, and he's written to us he wants to know if alternative medicines such as uh, homeopathic treatment or ayurvedic treatment are covered by any insurance company you know we've been doing this show for a while and the first time this question has come yeah 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 so uh, it's interesting uh, as far as i am aware uh, alok uh, homeopathic uh, treatment is not covered by any health insurance plan uh, ayurvedic treatment is covered by a couple of insurance insurers uh, but i would suggest that you specifically once you've chosen the plan specifically ask this question uh, from the insurer or the person you a uh, financial advisor that you're speaking to for buying your plan or if it's online ask ask us the uh, person that you're speaking to or read read the document but ask the get that clarification uh, specifically although ayurvedic is covered by a couple of insurers as far as i'm aware thanks a lot that's all the time that we have on this show of uh, policy bazaar but uh, i have a question for you and uh, you do get prizes uh, for answering it correctly what is the maximum tax deduction that you can claim under atc so i'll repeat that question for you what is the maximum tax deduction that you can claim under section atc and so you can reply on the email below and also at uh, twitter at policybazaar_in and we'll see you with another episode next time goodbye